Okay, this video is uh, the third in a series on some software I wrote. Um, if you haven't watched the previous videos, uh, I suggest doing that. Hopefully I remember to put some sort of annotation somewhere in this video uh, to them or, and or a playlist with them in it. Um, and the software is an overtime view list for calling overtime. Uh, in particular, I was looking at for firefighters. I am a firefighter by day and um, I just thought that this software could be useful. Uh, and the first video showed you how it works, how users interact with it. The second video showed you how to install and set it up, which is really just a couple of clicks. I showed you a little bit of the code just to, to give you an overview. But today we're going to be looking at the rest of the code. So if you go to github.com forward slash metalx1000, because my username is metalx1000, click on repositories, and hopefully I'll remember to put an annotation to this in the description of this video. Find the one that's labeled Overtime List. Click on that. And today we're just going to go through each of the files and I'm going to quickly talk about what each one does. Themes, something you don't need to get into really. Uh, I use jQuery Mobile for the interface and this is just some CSS basically for the colors and the look and feel of the application. You can play with that if you'd like. License, it is under a, um, uh, a uh, GPL L license, or an LGPL license. And uh, so you can read through that if you're unfamiliar with the LGPL license. Uh, next is a README file, which really doesn't say anything at this point. I need to add some stuff in there. Uh, calls. Calls is the main interface for the person making the calls. This is a uh, server-side script, um, and it is, well, let's, let's have a look at it. Let's go here. I have it installed, calls. So this is what it looks like. This is the script that if you click, it moves the names. And if you swipe, it brings up a little dialog box that on a phone or anything that can dial a number, you can click on the number to call that person. And when you do so, they move to the bottom of the list. So let's go ahead and look at the code for that. Just have a quick overview of it. Uh, as you can see, it's HTML code here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And uh, I mean, the top is basic headers. We're importing some jQuery mobile stuff, some CSS that we've already talked about, setting up for a mobile view. There's a title of the page. We'll skip down to the bottom, the very basic body uh, with some div tags. This div tag is the pop-up from when you swipe. It's mainly blank tags right now. And uh, same with the rest of the body. There's a header uh, and then there's a list view here. Uh, I do recommend getting yourself familiar with jQuery and jQuery Mobile uh, if you're not already. But hopefully, uh, as you can see, the main portion here, this JavaScript here, is what we're going to be looking at. So this first part here says document ready. When the page is done loading, what are we going to do? Well, first two things here is list view. The list view is, well, the list view here. You have two functionality here. You have click and swipe, both of which go to move. It moves the person to the bottom of the list. So let's go ahead and jump down to that function. So when you click or swipe, you will do this. It will get variables from the item that you selected. So it's going to get the, the PID, the name, the phone number, the rank. And then it's going to remove them, uh, you know, from the list and really move them to the bottom of the list. But then it's going to call our update func our update script, which we'll look at in a moment. And basically we're sending it nothing but our PID number. Um, so that's just what moves them to the bottom of the list in our database. Basically it's just updating their, their update column, which is a Unix timestamp, which is all done with this update PHP script here. And then it retrieves, it calls another function called getJSON, which we'll look at in a second. It also calls another PHP file, which is the log. Again, if you look at the previous videos, we have two tables, one that rotates the names through, the other one that does a continuous log, and this is sending it the name, phone number, and rank. The server-side script will date stamp it and everything like that. Now, as I said, when it's done, submitting to our update function. It's going to call another function called getJSON. Well, here we got our getJSON function. Uh, we have our URL here, which is read. Uh, and if we actually go to that right here and click on it, you can see it just gives us some JSON output. It's what's in that database, uh, that, uh, that first table there. And basically, it's going to get that information in the JSON format 
and and iterate through it using a, a for loop here. So it's getting it as array basically and then going through that array and it's going to update our list. So basically, if we go back to our calls PHP, we can click on any one of these or swipe it and it moves it. Basically what it's doing is, uh, it actually does remove it from the list for a second, but then it updates the whole list right away. So every time you do that, it's grabbing the whole new list. That way if there's more than one person working on the list, you get a fresh view of that. Um, so that's what all this does. Uh, and the one more thing we looked in, look at here really is, um, uh, well, there's this button click, which was in there from testing. I can actually remove that now. That would automatically, that would update the list without refreshing the page. Uh, so that's there if you wanted to add a button to refresh it. Really, there's probably only going to be one person working in this interface at a time, one person making overtime calls in most situations, if you're like my fire department. Anyway, there's another. So we have up here uh, the list view swipe to move them to the bottom of the list, but there's another list view swipe action here. So what does this do? This uh, grabs all that information again from the item you sw swiped and it creates a pop-up and places that information in there and with a um, hyperlink uh, reference here that has the header of tell which on uh, some browsers on some mobile devices is what brings up your call. That allows you to click that phone number to call. Uh, okay. Connect, uh, I talked about, create database, I talked about, and credentials, I talked about all in the previous video. Live view, live view is almost identical as our first view, except for it removed a whole bunch of the JavaScript. The only thing we have is the get JSON function here, which we already talked about. It grabs the read PHP and updates your list. Uh, and then I added an, a time interval here that says every 3000 milliseconds, which is every three seconds, is gonna run that function. So basically I removed all the code that actually interacts with the database because this is supposed to be viewable only. This is what the regular user is going to be looking at. So basically the same code with stuff removed and a little, again, time interval there. Uh, next is the log PHP. Log PHP is what will be doing the, the logging. Um, so you have update, which will be updating our first table. Log will be updating our second table. Uh, basically, it's calling our connect PHP, which connects the database, sets some variables for our table, from our table PHP. And then we're going to use uh, a array map here with the um, get here, it's gonna get all the form submits that we submit to it. And we're gonna strip tags and HTML special characters. This is to help avoid people trying to put in false information to basically gain access to stuff on your server that they're not supposed to. Uh, that's one thing I do for that there. I also set, you know, the time zone. For me, it's, uh, it's New York time zone. I'm in Florida, but I'm in that up-down time zone. Uh, and then we're gonna set the format for the date. Um, here we're going to uh, set a PID based on a timestamp here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we're going to access our table two, which is our ongoing log, which is what this PHP file is mainly uh, manipulating. Uh, and it's going to, you know, call that, uh, send the value of the PID. Um, and then once it does that, it's going to loop through each of the form get submits and their keys, and it's going to enter each one of those. Right here is entering each one of those. Right here is what that's doing, actually, all this right here. Uh, this first line is just giving the output to uh, your web page uh, so you know what values were entered. And then here we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to update that table again, that entry again, based on the PID. So basically the PID is the unique uh, key for each user. You want to make sure that they have a unique key in that PID. And basically we're just updating an entry based on that. Uh, and then at the end we're closing and then we're just echoing out the date that we generated up here. Going back here, that was log. Uh, log JSON. This is um, basically going to be doing your output here. So 
uh, if we go again back to here and we can click on our log JSON, it's the JSON output, but instead of just our list, it's our log, our ongoing list, which is grabbed by our log, our view log file, which we'll get to here in a moment. Again, connecting to our database, setting the table variables, uh, searching through it, grabbing the results, putting them in an array, and then iterating through the array, and then we're going to print that output as a JSON encoded output, and then we're going to close our connection to our database here. Um, next uh, is read. Read is very similar, but it's going to search our first table. This is, again, we have two tables. This is doing the exact same thing as our last code, but instead of for our log, it's going for our main table for our call view. Uh, next, we have well our test script here, which is actually not used in the main interface, but I talked about it in the last tutorial. If you want to test out the software, this basically is a shell script, a bash script that um, generates random names and random phone numbers, basically a bunch of fake names and fake phone numbers. Uh, just for testing this out and it will add, add edit them add them to our database so our update PHP script is uh, obviously very important this is um, for the actual call list again I keep saying it but I just don't want you to get confused we have two tables one is the log that is an ongoing list and then the other one's a rotating list this is one the update the rotating list and is also used for creating entries creating users um, so let's look through this again it's going to connect to our database. It's going to um, set the variables for the tables. It's going to strip away any um, tags or HTML special characters uh, for security reasons. It's going to set a time zone and date format. We're going to get the PID from what's passed to the script from the form submit. Uh, and then we're going to search our database here for anything with that PID. And it's going to say, okay, get the results. If there's more than zero results, we're updating entry. If not, we're going to create an entry. So that's why this script does two things. Again, it updates. So each time you move someone to the bottom of the list, it's updating them. But if you want to update someone's phone number or rank, this will do that as well based on that PID. That's why each user has to have a unique PID. If it doesn't see that PID, it's going to create a new entry. So you can use this for updating entries or creating entries. Uh, so once it's either created or updated an entry, it's now going to add the information to that entry. So anything that's passed to it through the get form submit, it's going to iterate through it here, get its key and its value. It's going to give some output to the screen for any user here, but then it's going to go into the database and it's going to, well, update that table, and it's going to set the key to the entry uh, where the PID that is sent is created. So hopefully you're somewhat familiar with databases. Uh, and if, if not, this isn't very helpful for you, but that's what it's doing. You can look over it. Again, it's, the thing about MySQL, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You know, what are we doing? We're updating. Where are we updating? Our table. Uh, what are we doing? We're going to set uh, the key that we're grabbing up here, uh, equal to the entry, uh, and then we're going to only do it where the PID is equal to the PID we send to it. And then we're actually going to, we're basically creating a variable here, and then we're actually doing it here for connecting and doing, connecting and then doing that. Uh, UDate, I'm um, creating a Unix timestamp here. Again, that's how we rotate the list by giving it a updated time list. And then we're actually going to submit that information. And then we're going to close our database and just give a time output just for visuals. And then the very last thing in this folder here is our view log. If we come here again, it's similar to our other scripts as far as the body and stuff. Um, we have our get JSON, which is the same as before, except for it's looking at a different file because instead of looking at our list, it's looking at our log and it's going to grab some more information where the regular list just has a name and phone number. The log actually has what rank uh, and other information, uh, rank and um, the timestamp uh, from when they were called. And uh, up here, 
we're saying when the document is ready, we're going to call that JSON um, function. Again, there's a function here for a button click. That was for testing, but you can add a button in there if you want to have a button to automatically update that list. Otherwise, just hit F5 to refresh the page. And that's it. I know that was a quick overview, but it's fairly simple. A lot of repeated stuff in there because uh, of different tables and different databases and the slightly different things they do. Um, pretty straightforward, though. If you're familiar at all with JavaScript, jQuery, PHP, and MySQL, this should be very straightforward. Four things that if you're going to be doing any type of web design, you really probably should know, in my opinion. I guess PHP isn't you know, necessary because there's other server-side uh, languages out there. But you're definitely going to want to know some sort of server-side language, some sort of client-side language, and some sort of database uh, language that you're going to be creating stuff with. And so if you know those four things, this should be pretty simple. If not, this probably is kind of confusing for you. But look over it. If, you, if, you, if you've done coding, a lot of it should be pretty straightforward. Um, and that's it. Again, that's up on GitHub. My username is melx1000. Just look for my uh, repository that's labeled uh, Overtime List. You can also visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, again, I hope that you watched the previous videos. If not, hopefully there's annotations up on the screen to a full playlist so you can watch all the videos uh, on the software. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Thank you.